everyone, Tracy here. Well, today I'm going to share with you an organizational project that I'm going to be working on this weekend. And it has to do with my distress inks. And I know I have a lot of them, but I really love them. Actually, I think I have all of them except for their his um, fall collection. And I wish I would have got the fall collection, but I didn't find out about it until... Um, excuse me, the winter collection came out, which I did get. So anyways... Um, how I usually use my distress inks, and you probably know this from past videos, is I use these makeup sponges. They're inexpensive and you don't feel so bad once they're like worn out to chuck them away. And they last a long time because, see this one's getting a little ucky there, I still use it. But once the pieces start falling off on my work and that, then you just cut this off and you have a, some more to work with. So I love using these. And I like to write the name of the actual ink on here so you know which sponge is which for which one. And I only have um, two of the Tim Holtz uh, uh, applicators, the tools, and I like them actually. Um, I like both ways, but I thought um, the reason I don't use these because I hate changing the colors. It's just, I know, it's really, really lazy on my part, but uh, that's one of the reasons I don't use them. Plus, you know, they're pricey and um, I'm cheap. I'm not going to go out and buy all of these. And so anyways, what I came up with, because I'm going to uh, use both methods of applying my ink. So what I came up with was to find some blocks to you to make my own um, tools. And what I used are the dollar stamps, or the dollar fifty stamps from Michaels like these ones here, these blocks, and what I did was I put them in the microwave, put one of these blocks in the microwave for 10 to 15 seconds, and then you can peel apart the pink from the gray, so you could still use these, because I'm, I'm trying to, I have so many wooden blocks, I'm trying to use them into a clear, well I guess it's not clear, but the, um, uh, the different mounting so you don't have to use the the wooden blocks it'll take up a lot less space so what I did like I said was 10 to 15 seconds in the microwave and you can pull off the pink and then you can pull off the gray sometimes you have to um, go back in to pull off the foam part and then this part here uh, <clears throat> excuse me where the picture is on that that pulled off really well and here are the blocks that I have and I'll show you there's different sizes because one of them are some of them are square. This one just happened to be a perfect size, but some of them are longer. And I just took the tool, measured it, and drew a line. And then I'm going to get my husband to um, cut these all off with the the chop saw. I was going to use my scroll saw, but the scroll saw doesn't actually well. I can't get it to cut straight. It's more for lots of bends and curves in your cutting. And then these ones here were from these stamps. So I got to fit three on one block, which is perfect. And like I said, most of these came off really good, but some of them didn't like this one. Some of the gray is left on, the gray foam. But once um, I cut them and put the actual Velcro on here, I don't think you're going to notice a difference. And then I ran to the fabric store and I bought some very thick velcro and this is the rough rough part of the velcro and you need it rough for um, the actual foaming to stick to it see how nicely that sticks and like I said once this goes on here it doesn't matter that this is sticky and yucky I'm not sure if this is really important or not but I noticed that these ones the ones from Tim Holtz have a little bit of foam a little cushion underneath the actual velcro so what I was going to do was use some of this easy mount because it's about the same the same width actually or the same height as this and it gives a little cushion but like I said I really don't think you need it because because these here are foamy in themselves and you just need that to um, attach to there so I don't really think you even need that so I'll I'll debate on doing that as I go along but yeah, so I guess that's it for this stage. And then I will get my husband to cut these and I will show you the end results. Okay, I got my husband to cut all my blocks here. I have a cold and I didn't trust myself with my 
hand-eye coordination with the saw. Didn't want to lose any of my fingers, so I got my husband to do it. And I had already adhered all the Velcro to the backs of the blocks, and I'll just show you what I did. Now, some of them had some of the gray foam left on there. I couldn't get it off. If I tried for, I don't know, an hour, I might be able to get them all off, but I didn't want to do that. So, um, it's okay that they're going to stay on. And if you can tell, there's some little spurs left from, um, little wood pieces left from cutting it. So you just take a little piece of sandpaper and you just sand them off. And I'd said at first I was going to put the foam underneath like he has on, um, these tools here. But I don't think it really needs it. I think that would just be more um, product that I really don't don't want to waste. So um, I bought this sheet of Velcro and it's sticky back and it has a really good adhesive on the back. I just bought that from my fabric store. And uh, so I just measured it up to the size I wanted. So I just put, put it to one edge and then used a good pair of scissors and cut this other edge off on it even. And I just cut that off and then peel the protective film off. Film off. Sorry, I'm not talking very well and <laughs> my voice is kind of going and my brain is a little foggy from the cold but I wanted to get these done so I had to do the video now and then you put it down and these foams work really well on the block see look didn't want to come off and uh, it works great because mostly when I use my foaming tool or I usually just hold on or my distressing tool I usually just hold on to it from here I never hold on here I don't know how many people do so actually I really don't need this and so there we have the foam is on the block so I have each one has its own color and here's a reason why I wanted each block to have um, its own tool for each ink is because I pulled this one off and I ripped off the corner. There's nothing wrong with it, but I just ripped the corner off. And I don't know, it's just easier to to have one of each color instead of uh, switching them out all the time. And how some of them, I have a couple that I have um, the foaming pad already for use for the block. And this is how I label them. I labeled them with my label maker. And then I colored a little piece of uh, paper and stuck it on there. So you got the color and the actual name. And I want to do the same with these as well. I want to put the name of the color on here. And I don't think I need uh, the heart. I might do it anyway just, just because I'm anal like that. But um, I heard that Tim Holtz has some... I'm not sure if it's him or Ranger on their site they actually have that you can print it down on sticky back paper. I'm not sure if if that's accurate because I haven't found it. I went on his site and I tried to look for it, but I haven't found it yet. So if somebody can sh show me a link to it, I would love that. Then I wouldn't have to print them all out on my label maker. I could just print them all out on the printer. So there you go. That's how I did all these tools and I'm going to have lots of fun putting all the organizing it because I love to do stuff like that then I just have to find a place to store them all so there you have it there's my way that I made all my own tools for the distress inks thanks for joining me bye now